Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the next session with small wire and fault tolerance. Um, today's topic is circuit breaker. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Let's switch directly to the code. So last time we saw the bulkhead operation um, that you could use if you have a limited amount of resources mm -hmm. um, and you want to throttle the concurrent requests. Yep. Um, today we want to talk about a circuit breaker and um, yeah, what is a circuit breaker? Um, actually, this is what it says. <laughs> um, it's if you have, for example, if you call a backend service, a third party service or so, Mm -hmm. and it breaks down because of some issue. Uh, maybe it's overloaded, maybe it's redeploying and uh, whatever. So uh, at the moment, uh, the requests fail. So there's often no use in continuing to bombard the service with requests. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if it went down because you overloaded it, then better wait and don't bombard it again. Also, if you have retry mechanics, either in your backend or in the client, mm -hmm. then you might even destroy or kill it even more um, by by your retries and increasing the load. Mm -hmm. So the bulk, uh, the circuit breaker is a way uh, to work around this. Um, so basically, um, when you when you see that a service is out of business service, out of service, yeah, um, then you will stop your request towards this service, yeah, and that's the, and then you do this for configure the amount of time okay and then uh the circuit breaker uh probes it again after that time mm -hmm. just let's through one request and checks if it's working again mm -hmm. if it's working again it opens or it closes the circuit again and you again do the requests and all goes back to normal mm -hmm. if it's still failing it's still waiting and okay. uh leaving that service alone and always keep in mind you these annotations for small by fault tolerance, they basically work on all the method methods in your services. Um, so it's not just for external REST calls or so. It could also be for the calls to your database, mm -hmm. um, which could suffer the same issues. So you can use it basically with each method. Or yeah, function. with each method in your yeah. service, you could use that. Okay. So um, if you remember from very beginning um, we had our uh, cookie service where we baked some cookies and it was uh, quite uh, unreliable uh, and today we want to uh, restructure this a small or a little bit mm -hmm. um, we want to create an ingredient service where we try to get ingredients from um, So it's also just a service, application scope, um, here we say we consume the ingredients for a cookie. Um, we have this uh, service class here implements basically our storage. So um, we have some ingredient and we get deliveries from time to time keep in mind i'm not using like atomic stuff here so um, better not do this with real parallelism but for the demonstration sake it's okay um, so whenever we call this method um, we first check if our last delivery was uh, like a really long time or a really long time ago. So every 30 seconds we get a delivery. And uh, if it's more than 30 seconds ago, the last delivery, then ah, I need a loader. Then we Receive new ingredients. And uh, yeah, we fill up our storage to like three. Let's 
So, um, packing ingredients just takes a bit of time or consuming them. Um, just so we, or checking even, we haven't mm -hmm. checked yet. So, um, if we have more than zero, all is fine. Um, not that we have them. down and if we do not have them then we also lock oops left and we throw not found exception not found mm -hmm. so <clears throat> This is our basic ingredient service. Uh, as you can, manage, can imagine, if we um, consume ingredients um, over and over, then um, we will run out if we go too fast. But if we go only consume three in 30 seconds, then it's fine. Mm -hmm. So, um, But if it's empty, then it will take a while until we get new ones. Mm -hmm. So let's now. We just inject it here in the cookie service, ingredient service, and let's see. For now, let's remove the retry and stuff. So, ingredient service dot consume. So this can be anything that's like a very costly external call or so yeah. um, to a service that might break down or so. Mm -hmm. um, okay, now if we just try this out. So at the moment we would have the fallback. Yeah, we have the fallback, yeah. Okay. So um, yes, we, we get some uh, old cookies, but mm -hmm. um, what we will see is uh, should be this endpoint. Here is your new cookie. Okay, let's just so it always takes these two seconds to mm -hmm. getting for getting the cookie. Here's an old cookie. Okay. Uh, no, that was yeah. the fallback. Yeah, that was the fallback, mm -hmm. yeah. And if we check the logs here, uh, we try to bake a cookie, we receive new ingredients the first time, taking ingredients just in time, delivered, or... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, trying to bake a cookie, next one, next one, and then trying to cook, uh, to bake a cookie, and then no ingredients left, mm -hmm. and then fallback, and mm -hmm. then next time also no ingredients left. But every time we do this, we wait this two seconds, for example, for the other service to fail. And we still call this other service and mm. put fresh on it. So what we can do, we can add the circuit breaker. And it has a couple of properties um, that we can look at. So um, there's first a fail on and a skip on for exceptions that you want to react to or ignore. Mm. So you can say, for example, if you call another service, uh, not found is usually not uh, something that is uh, concerning uh, because when you call some API with some ID that is not, the thing is not there, then it's not there, there's a normal yeah. response. But if it's going like 500 or five thump, 500 something, mm -hmm. then probably there's something wrong. Um, yeah. Then you can say there's a delay. Um, the delay after which the, the open circuit will transition to half open. Mm -hmm. Half open means it sends a request and basically tries again. Yeah. But only one request or so um, to probe it. And if it's then working, then it uh, opens the, uh, no, then it closes the yeah. circuit again. I find it so counterintuitive. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So here we, yeah, the, the uh, unit for the delay. Then we have the request uh, volume threshold. 
This is basically the, there's a rolling window mm -hmm. over all your requests. And it records, did the request fail or not? And if the failure ratio is exceeded in this time frame or in, in this amount of requests, then it opens the circuit. Then it says, okay, this is yeah. going wrong. So, so the default is when within 20 requests, yeah. half of them are failing, yeah. then it will open. It will open, okay. Yeah. Because we are at 50%. Yes, exactly. Okay. And then you can also specify the success threshold. So how many requests need to be successful again to in close. the half open state mm -hmm. okay. to fill fully close it again. Yeah. Okay, the default is one, but you could say we need five successful yeah. requests. Yeah, because one might be luck. Mm -hmm. And if okay. five work again, then we are confident. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we want to get it a bit down. So we, we decrease this window to four. Mm -hmm. So if half of four requests fail, then it will open. Okay. So uh, if we start this. So is it then like the fallback or is then, is then another method called or what happens then? So um, this circuit breaker, yeah. Or when do you mean when it fails? Yeah, when it when it starts to open. Yeah, then basically this method fails, so mm -hmm. the fallback will trigger. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, so it will trigger. It basically uh, the, the circuit breaker faster. just yeah. says, "Okay, this is going wrong." Okay, and then the next. Annotation. Then the next level okay. might handle. So if there was no fallback annotation, then the cookie resource which is calling this mm -hmm. would get the error, the exception. Okay. Um, but since we have the fallback here, it is handling the exception. Okay. So, let's see. So, we get our first cookie, second cookie, third cookie, no cookie. One failing. No cookie. And now we are failing fast. Yeah. Okay, now we don't have to wait. Yeah. And um, yep. so if we look at the logs, we try to bake a cookie, we get the ingredients, taking ingredients, okay. Then we, uh, we make three successful cookies. Mm -hmm. Then it fails. Because no ingredients. Yes. Um, it fails again. And then we directly fall back. So now... Let's see. Yeah. So what we can do, we can have a closer look what hap what's happening here by enabling debug logging for um, fault tolerance. So um, I went to the application properties mm -hmm. where we can configure Quarkus. Um, you can configure the log category for this package. So all, everything in fault tolerance will now have a debug log level. Okay. So we start up again. And now we get more information. We should get more information about the fault tolerance stuff. Okay. So let's see. Using this is much better than just going full all Quarkus debug level because then you will be spammed. Okay. Um, yeah. So we do the same. First one works. Second works. Third one. Now we fail. We fail again, mm -hmm. and now it's open. Let's also see the, yeah. You see, now it's probing again. It took a bit longer. It was still an old cookie. It mm -hmm. still failed. Now it's probing, probing again. again. Okay. And if we have a look now and later try again, then it should the next probe should work. So what we see here now, we had no ingredients left. Mm -hmm. Um, invocation failed, invoking fallback. Okay. Also invoking fallback. And then here, uh, here, invocation prevented by circuit breaker. So the bake cookie method was not even called. Mm -hmm. So if we go back to our cookie service, this code was not executed. We also see that we have no lock like that. So mm -hmm. watch 
it doesn't even try. So we see uh, failed, failed, failed. And then here we try again. A half open. Uh, invocation failed again. We invoke a fallback again. We fail again fast. Prevented by circuit breaker. Here we tried again. It failed again. Now let's try again and get a new cookie. So we, it tried again because it was um, yeah, the, the, the five seconds of the circuit breaker were over. Um, and we received new, we got a new cookie. And when we do this now again, we again bake a cookie. So the circuit breaker okay. is closed. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that's circuit breaker. It's a really helpful tool, especially when you work with um, third party APIs and so on, uh, or even like inside your company, other services that you need to call. Um, it's important to stop bothering them if they already have issues, mm. um, especially when you have retries and so such things in place, because they can basically work as a as a DOS attack. Okay. Yeah. When you when they get into trouble and you. <laughs> But can you serve me now? Can you now? I can you now? Information. <laughs> yeah. uh, then it makes only uh, makes it only worse. Mm. And with this, you can help alleviate the pressure 